Welcome to 30 Minutes of Faith. We're very pleased today to have Pastor Chuck Wysong from the Life Community Church in Roseville. Welcome and thanks for coming. Thanks, John. Will you tell us where you got your start in life, born and raised, your parents and siblings and things? Yeah, uh, we grew up down in the Long Beach area. It's called Lakewood, California. And my mom and dad had three children, one of each kind. And uh, I, I'm just kidding, but I'm the youngest of three brothers and uh, went to Mayfair High School, then Cal State Fullerton. And I graduated from Fuller Theological Seminary with a Master's of Divinity. How old were you when you decided you wanted to do ministry work? I was a junior in high school, and I uh, went to a camp and uh, during the winter time, and um, was at this camp and really met God for the first time. It in feeling and sensing His call not to just attend, but that God would want to use me to make a difference in this world. So it was really when I was a junior. About 16 or 17 years old is when I received that call. Did your parents take you to church as a child? They did. We were a very religious family. Uh, we grew up Presbyterian, and, um, and that, would, that was all great. But uh, we were more going through the motions with our religion instead of having that personal relationship with Christ. And so for, for me, it was that junior year is when, when God really became real. And I was actually privileged to lead both of my parents uh, into that personal relationship with the Lord later on in life. Are they still living? No, mom and dad passed away. They, they, they've been gone uh, for uh, several years now. But uh, man, they made an unbelievable difference in my life. Me too. Yeah. Pretty Born of goodly parents is a real gift. Yeah, yeah. How did you come to this pulpit in Roseville? Well, uh, I've now been in the ministry over 30 years. Uh, most of the time of my ministry has been with youth, uh, uh, spending time with teenagers and making a difference with families. And then God really called me into uh, not just spending time with teenagers, but what I call to the overall uh, life of the church. I really believe God's called me to be a champion for adults, teenagers, men's and women's and kids and all that kinds of stuff. So uh, we, my family and I, we, we got here about uh, seven and a half years ago. I have a wife, uh, her name's Gail, and we have four children. And um, uh, all th three uh, sons now are serving uh, in the ministry uh, somewhere in the country now. And my daughter is 15, is a ballet dancer and singer and stuff. But we've been here at Life Community Church for about seven and a half years, and uh, we're able to just purchase our, our land about, uh, and building about three years ago, and uh, we currently are now launching a Saturday night service, which is called a multi-site church. We, we have our, our services at, from 9, 15, and 11 at our Foothills campus, but we're actually extending our ministry out west because there are 16,000 new homes that are going to be built in, over the next two years, uh, starting in two years. And so we said, why don't we extend our ministry out? So we're actually launching a Saturday night service now. What's your feeling about whether people are religious or not and how they define religion? Well, uh, I think, uh, you know, the statistics are that uh, over 90, 95% of Americans have an idea that there is a God. And um, I, uh, I think religion, uh, it, it always gets a bad rap, but I definitely think people are looking and searching for something. They're, they're looking for a philosophy to follow or, or something to fill that missing hole inside of their hearts. So uh, uh, what, what, we, what we like to say at our church is, God doesn't necessarily want to have a religion with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And uh, so that, that's more what we teach at, at our church. But, but uh, churches and synagogues and, and all that's going on in the country, there's far more better going on than we hear of the negative that's going on. Um, one of the things, John, I think that I see right now in, in uh, the American church is the church realizing that we, it can't just be us four and no more, that we're not a holy huddle hiding behind four walls, but but that we really do want to make a difference in the community. And so at Life Community, what, what we've done is we've really launched out into our community outreach ministries. And our line that we like to say is, good deeds leads to goodwill, which leads to an opportunity to share the good news. 
And what I think what's happened is a lot of people think, well, uh, you know, people just need to come and hear the good news. No, today people need to see the good news in action. They need to see God's loving hands and arms uh, wrapping around them by serving the poor, feeding the poor, by, by uh, helping out in our communities. And I'm seeing that all over the nation right now of churches saying, we're not just going to stay hidden behind the four walls. We really want to make a difference in our community. Do you teach from the Bible? Yes, I do. And how is the Bible received by people these days? I would say um, a lot of times uh, people are uh, coming to church. That's the only time they're going to hear the Bible read. <laughs> they're not necessarily reading it themselves. I, I want them to. Uh, maybe they're hearing it on Christian Station or they're seeing it like this on, on a faith TV type thing. But people are coming. They want to know what's in the Bible. And, but a lot of times, John, I don't know if you feel this way, I think people already have a perception of what they think is in the Bible, what they think the Bible says. And it's, it's so great to be able to open it up and say, this is what God's Word has for you. And, uh, and it's, it's awesome to see the lights just turn on for people when you do that. Do you have a favorite book in the Bible? Well, it's the one I'm reading right now. <laughs> well <laughs> and I'm stated. In, I'm in the Gospel of Luke right now. This, uh, this uh, last year, I I've been spending time in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now going forward, I'm going to be in Acts through Re Revelation. That's just my own personal time. But wow, the Gospel of Luke is fantastic. It's, it's got to be one of the best historical documents ever written. I mean, the Bible is, but Luke, the writer, was, did, did a fantastic you know, job. Of course, he was inspired by God, but the Gospel of Luke's my favorite right now. <laughs> my mother decided on her 12th birthday that she would read the Bible every year huh. from cover to cover. Yeah. And my attitude was, you know, I've done it once, and if God will forgive me, I'll never do it again sort of thing, <laughs> page by page. Yeah. But she did that till she was 75 years old. Never considered herself a scriptorian or, you know, a biblical scholar. She yeah. just loved the Bible. Yeah, yeah. She just liked to read it. Huh. And, and she would say, I'd say, what's going on in your life? Well, <laughs> I'm in the Gospel of, or yeah. Paul's talking to, you know, the Ephesians. Yeah. And, and away she would go. Yeah. Do you find religion to be... Um, routine and those people who view themselves as very religious? Well, again, I think people can get comfortable in religion. They can get comfortable going through the motions. It's when God's timing shows up in a person's life that they realize there's more to it than just being religious, going through the motions, doing good works, that this God is a personal God. Jesus told us to pray our Father. And that means literally Abba. That means Daddy. That God wants to be a personal uh, Father, a Heavenly Father in our lives. I just spoke last, last uh, Sunday and I talked about the Our Father prayer and that a lot of people struggle with that because they didn't have the best fathers. But it says Our Father, Jesus said, in heaven. So we have a perfect Father that wants to have a relationship with us. And so it's not as much as if we're good or bad that God's love is based on. God's love isn't based on your performance. God's love is based on his character, on that he is a loving God. He is a faithful God, a kind God, a just God as well. But uh, so th that's, that's kind of what I think. I think people are yearning for more than just going through the motions. Do people know how to pray? I think a lot of times people use prayer like it's a vending machine. They just put it in and they, they just hope that, that God's just going to give them what they asked for. And prayer is much more than that. Prayer is literally, if you think about it, God is pursuing us in prayer. He wants to be in a relationship with us. And so when I pray, I, I simply start off with, thank, with praising God for who he is. I actually say I brag on God. I say, God, you are a holy God. I praise you that you are a loving God, an all-knowing God, an all-powerful God. And then I move into a time of what I call confession, where I will just say, Lord, I've, I've messed up here, or show me areas where I've messed up, and I want to confess that. And then I move into a time of thanksgiving. And then last is when 
I start praying for others and praying for myself. But I think mostly people are always praying for themselves. And they're just saying, God, I want, God, I want this. And I think God's saying, I'm more interested in a relationship with you rather than just being a vending machine with you. One of my earliest recollection, recollections was kneeling at my father's, mm. he was sitting on the bed. I would kneel at his knees, yeah. put my arms up on his knees. Mm. And he'd say, you know, bow your head, close your eyes and pray and just pretend that I'm Heavenly Father, that you've got your hands on Heavenly huh. Father's knees huh. and he's right here and he can yeah. just reach out. He's going to hear everything you say huh. and yeah. you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. That made it very, very real yeah. for me. You know, and Jesus said, even earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their kids, right? Absolutely. How much more does our Heavenly Father, who has unending resources, unending love and power, want to pour out into our lives? So how is your church going? It, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a healthy church. I, I like to say we're not as concerned as, as being, uh, you know, this uh, gigantic uh, church as much as, and I have nothing wrong with the gigantic churches, and their mega churches are doing phenomenal work. Uh, I, my concern is that we be a healthy church. And so we try to focus in on really three specific things. We call it connect, grow, and serve and that we would connect people to Christ, help them grow in their faith, and then help them make a difference with their life in the world. And that's where serve comes in. So we just try, try to keep it very simple and, uh, and move forward that way. So it, it, it's going great. I, I love our people, I love our church. This is where I'm planning on ending uh, my ministry and uh, as far as as a senior pastor. So uh, it's, it's been a, a great ride. Greater Sacramento, parts of Placer and Yellow County have 1,700 congregations. Mm. Some of them are little, some of them are big. Right. They're all very important and they're all, you know, praising God, whatever name they call him, and are doing very, very well. Well, as we wrap up this segment, if you could wave a magic wand in the world and fix or change or repair something, yeah. what would that be? I, I would say my magic wand would be that every person uh, in the world would know they matter to God and that there is a Heavenly Father and that He does have a wonderful plan for every person's life and that if I could wave this magic wand that they would know they're loved by this, by this great God. He has a plan and that He wants to use them to make a difference in this world for Him. So that, that would be my, my very, very simple uh, response to that. He sees even the sparrow fall. Yeah. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, John. Nice to visit with you. Okay. For a minute. And good luck and God bless. Okay, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All new episodes of 30 Minutes of Faith are coming soon to Sacramento Faith TV. Join John Fish as he interviews inspiring members of our faith community. Tune in and watch 30 Minutes of Faith on Sundays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Welcome back to our second segment of 30 Minutes of Faith. We're happy to have the music pastor of Life Community Church in Roseville, Will Derryberry. Will, thank you for joining it's us. It's great to be here. Tell us where you got started in life, where you're born and raised, what's going on. Sure. I wish I was wearing your suit, though. I'm a little hillbilly. That's all right. You look today. fine. You thank look you. Fine. Um, I, uh, I grew up here in uh, Auburn, actually, just a few uh, skips and jumps up the road from here. And um, went to school uh, here, Went to graduated from uh, Placer High School. Um, and, uh, you know, I really just uh, early on got a real a huge passion for uh, writing music, performing music. And um, it wasn't soon after high school into college that I met up with um, a friend of mine, Bob Kilpatrick, um, who's been in the ministry, music ministry, since uh, uh, the late 60s, early 70s. And really, he mentored me um, early on in, in my faith and, uh, and with my passions with music and, uh, and really gave me a, a great foundation uh, to move into ministry and, and do, it, uh, do it with, uh, you know, a, a, the right kind of frame of mind and heart uh, as, uh, as I moved forward and in, 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 in really uh, sp spreading the good news to people. So, Were you raised in a religious home? I wasn't actually. Um, I was raised in a home that just didn't talk about faith, didn't talk about religion, didn't talk about God, didn't talk about any of that. 
Um, and so it was, uh, it was quite the experience for me when I uh, came, came to know, know God. And, and uh, there was this sense of like, well, who am I now? And so there's a lot of great questions that I had that I really was seeking out myself uh, to find rather than having people feed me answers uh, early on. I felt like that really helped me. And when you write music, does it flow spiritually for you well? I think so. You know, it's, uh, I think that was one of the, uh, the, um, the roots of how God was calling me was through um, the, the passion that I have for music and songwriting and taking that time to reflect. And, and uh, it's funny how God uh, uses our passions to really communicate to us as well. Um, especially if we're if we're being open to him, and so for me it was uh, it was it was a, a great experience for me coming to not knowing God and knowing God and how music partnered with that whole experience with God. It was really good. Good music is a yeah. uni- good music's a universal language, isn't it? Yeah, not? everybody can speak and read and understand the language, yep. even even if they can't carry a tune. Sure, they still like good music. So, what do people at church like to hear these days? Well, I think, it's, uh, I think that they want to hear truth. They want to hear something that's going to speak to their heart uh, with which they already believe about God. Um, but I think also, too, one of the big uh, uh, strengths in, in when you're gathering together is, is one, you're, you're, you know, you're connected with the pastor so that, uh, so that when you're coming together to, uh, to, to bring forth God's word, that uh, you're doing it in a, in a way that's, uh, that really is a partnership. So that there isn't this, uh, you know, well, he's doing his thing here and he's doing his thing here and there isn't, the truth isn't matching up or the themes aren't matching up. And so I think that uh, having a seamless uh, message uh, is, is a big part of it. Of course, it rooting in truth in God's word. Um, but I think that there's, uh, you know, you think about stylistically, everybody's got their, their choice as sure. well. Um, but I think that there's a, a real plus in, um, in remembering songs uh, from the past as well as songs that are happening right now um, because people have those things that they've, they've uh, those moments in life that they've created in, in, in their minds um, and they look fondly back to those songs that they may have heard you know, 20, 30 years ago that uh, you bring back, it just takes them back to a, uh, a place of, of maybe strength or maybe a reflection of maybe some things that they went through that was hard but God brought them through. You know, there's all those things that kind of come in but I think remembering past and uh, present is great when, uh, when selecting music and song and that. Are you familiar with the old Christian hymn, There is a Green Hill Far Away? Um, no, no, but... It, uh, a, lo- a lovely old hymn yeah. about... Uh, Maybe I should... The Mount, of, Mount of Olives and, you know, just some of those things. It's, yeah. It, that doesn't matter too much except to say that in my childhood there were two women in, in church. They were both blind. Yeah. One played the violin, one played the piano. Yeah, and they would they would stand together, and if the one playing the piano played the piano, the other one would sing. If the other one played the violin, the other one would sing. Wow! And they would sing as a prelude opening, you know, to church. There is a green hill far away. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, that would yeah, that would speak without times. the city wall, I think it was, and mm-hmm. it was, and it talked about Christian things and Christ-like mm-hmm. things, and it it moved me every time, even when I was just a little boy. Yeah, I, I could feel it and what yeah. was going on there. Do you sing at home? I do. Yeah, I do. You have I children. Sing. Yep. And do they like to sing? It's funny that you ask that. I um, I just the other day was singing and I had uh, two my two girls, Ari and Ruby. Um, they're six and four, and uh, and I'm you know I'm trying to like rehearse and get things <laughs> th- things down. They're pulling on me and pulling stuff out of my pockets, and I try to say, well, well, what do you need? And then they just proceed to finish up the song I was just singing. So it was like one part extremely flattering and the other part was like, it's pretty <laughs> annoying. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're, I think they're just now kind of discovering uh, music and wanting to maybe kind of go down that pathway to um, learning how to play an instrument and, and do that. So. And at church, do you have other members there who participate actively in the music yeah yeah we've got about um i want to say around 30 different uh folks that play various different instruments that are that are plugging in and and getting involved and uh and it's a really it's just an a a great group of people one that uh there's uh we're beginning to see a high level of musicianship but 
everybody on our team has just got a, an awesome heart and wanting to serve, and, uh, and we all just get along great, which isn't always the case when you pull a whole bunch of musicians together. But in this case, it really is true, and it's uh, fun serving with, uh, with, uh, with everybody who's a part of that team. Did you have to work hard to become a musician, or was it sort of mourn in you? No, I think that it was a lot of work, but um, I think what really helped, and I think probably helps in a lot of passions, is that it, it indeed, it's something that I, I love to do. Um, so it helps in that, uh, that endeavor to, uh, to, to kind of lose track of time or lose yourself in it. Um, but yeah, I, me I remember just spending hours and hours trying to, to, to get better, recording myself going, oh, I don't like that, I, I need to do this different. And, and, uh, but yeah, just spending hours doing it, one, to get better, which was a lot of work, but two, because I love to do it. So. When my mother was a little girl, three, I will say, yeah. they would turn the player piano on and watch the keys jump. And by yeah. the time she was five or six, she could play the music from the 20s and 30s, just play it, you know, yep. half memorized, half by ear. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a home where I could just sing to her a new Beatles song or a new Beach Boys song, yeah. and she would play it. Mm -hmm. And that worked really well, and it worked really well for my friends and all those other things. She had a stroke when she was in her mid-70s, mm. and after she came home from the hospital, I said to her one day, sit down and play Lazy River for us. And she said to me, I can't remember how to play mm. the piano anymore. Mm. And, it, and it didn't seem to phase her too much. It yeah. was like, oh, you know, I, I can't do that anymore. And, wow. and the rest of us were real sad. And, mm. you know. But people who bring music to us bring a lifetime mm. of peace and enjoyment and yep. pleasure and all those other sorts of things. Where do you see your role as the music pastor? What, what, is, mm -hmm. what are you supposed to be doing on well, the Sabbath days? Yeah, well, you know, I think uh, it's one to bring leader, leadership and focus uh, people on um, what worship is about. Um, but also, too, I think it's, it, there's, there's this sense of empowering. Um, I want pe people to feel empowered to um, express their heart and their mind to God. And hopefully, at the same point, um, help people get past all the other things that when they come in on a Sunday morning or a Saturday night um, as we gather to get get rid of all that other stuff that's coming at us continually. That's nicely put. Um, so, but uh, really focus is, focusing us in on on giving worth and and adoring God and 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 really meditating uh, on His truth as we sing out. So, how do you choose the music you're going to present? I really like to know uh, in advance uh, like where we're going um, scripturally, thematically in the message so that I can best partner um, where we're going to be going. So uh, for me, knowing um, a few weeks at least in advance where, where we're going really helps me um, because I think it really, again, it, it comes with, uh, with all those things that can distract us. Um, even coming together with a pastor and not really knowing what we're wanting to communicate um, can be a distraction. And so that's, that's kind of where I start, is where are we going scripturally, where are we going thematically, and then, uh, and then go from there. Once you know that, is it easy for you? Um, it can be. Um, most of the time it's, it's, it's fairly easy to do, but, uh, but it does take time because, you know, I want to make sure that is what I'm doing really, you know, where, where God wants us to go. And I don't want to really just rush past and go plug, 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 go, you know. Um, and so I, I do try to take time and pray over it and think, think through, okay, how, how am I going to best communicate these songs, um, knowing what I know about where we're going to go scripturally and um, thematically. Um, and and if, if all those pieces come together and I'm, and I'm all those, you know, uh, reflections that are going in my mind come together, then, then I know it's a, it's a green light. So are there some worship services that when you get done, you just go, yeah. Oh, you yeah. Got it. Or, and maybe some others where, uh, I don't know. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so live and learn. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, there's just going to be times where, you know, you know it's, it's, it all works together and sometimes it, it doesn't. But Does think, anybody notice besides you? Oh, probably. You know, um, they're probably too nice to not say anything. Others aren't maybe as nice and will say something, but that's good too. But I think the biggest thing for me is that uh, I know that this isn't uh, a, a Will Dairy, uh, Dairy Berry performance. This is, this is something where I'm, I'm, I'm I, again, I'm wanting to bring people together for one purpose, 
and that is to worship and adore God. The performance may not be stellar every single time, but um, let's get our hearts right, let's get our minds right and focus in on. And the thought passes through my mind that maybe on that given day, maybe just one person yeah. was, was deeply, deeply touched. Sure. Maybe next week there will be 38 who are deeply touched. Yeah. If you get one, that's really, really Perfect. good. Perfect, yep. Well, as we come to the close, let me ask you the sort of magic question that if you yeah. can wave a magic wand in the world and change or fix or repair something, what would that be? I would have probably come a little bit dressed nicer. <laughs> no, I think that there's a lot of... Uh, you uh, look fine. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I think there's, there's so much that you would, you would think that, you know, I, I wish this could be different. I wish this could be different in the world. Um, but I think uh, um, within our community here that I see and have experienced myself is that uh, life is busy. There's a lot of busyness going on, and um, there's less time uh, spent with... Um, with family and friends and having uh, dinner with people and just getting to know and be uh, with people. Um, and there's more focus on getting the job done, getting uh, this accomplished, making sure that uh, the house is clean, making sure, I mean, all those different busy things that get in the way, um, which is good things, but nonetheless, I, I feel like um, there's gonna be um, enough of us at the end of our lives wishing that we had just a little more time spent uh, with each other. Well, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. That's you enlightening bet. and fun to hear. And, Thanks, John. And uh, God bless you in the work. Bless you too. Thanks. Thanks so much.